Hi, I'm Phil Bridges, owner of Straight Arrow Repair. Ever want to know how a repairman fixes things? Well, come with me and I'll show you how I solve problems. Let's make things better together. No, I don't need it right now. Do I need to grab one for you? I'm recording right now. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to, but I really am. There's things that you have to consider when you're getting ready to uh, jack up a house or level a house. And one of the things you have to consider is if you were to come down or up, what will you break? Um, so, in this case, you see the sewer line right here is pretty much solid. There's like an inch between those. Between here and here. You could cut up here if you wanted to come down. Or you could dig underneath. Um, which again, you have to keep up. If you notice on this thing, it's running down here from here to here, but it's also running downhill that way, which means that it should be probably raised up there because the water uh, will outrun the solids, and the solids will be down there in the low part, and the water will go through. So you'll have a smaller opening instead of that big. It'll be down like that, big, down that way. So you want to gradually fall. One of your also is your electrical. In this case, we have quite a bit. It's like we could go up forever uh, and down. Uh, you also have phone lines, uh, internet lines. Usually they're not tight, but you want to check them. Uh, water lines. Uh, we did one and broke the water line because they repaired the water line when the house had been settling down three inches lower. And then when we went up, it broke the water line. So uh, you also have, uh, in, in this case, this is a double wide. You have to think about um, the duct work. You can't go down and crush your duct work. You quite often have to dig down if you do go down. So uh, these are all things you need to think about. I personally have not dealt with a lot of snakes. I'm, uh, I'm not in West Texas. I'm in the center of America, Northwest Arkansas. Um, occasionally, we'll see black snakes. And uh, I went to a house oh, probably seven years ago, and there were two great big black snakes that if you got close to them, they'd try to bite you. Uh, also in that same house, we had a uh, great big spider so it was kind of a it, it's not like you won't possibly run into a poison snake it's just generally they try to stay away from you uh and that's the case period if you get on them then they're gonna or get close to them they're scared they're gonna try to bite you they're not trying to kill you they're just trying to protect themselves so things that i see right away when i come underneath this house first of all if I look through there, I see that most of the insulation is still up. Uh, a lot of times, a house 20 years old or so will have had plumbers come in, and uh, most of those guys are pretty heavy, thick, and they just are desperate to get into the place where the bathroom is, and then they just cut open the insulation. They don't put it back, and they didn't right there, and I haven't been on the other end. Second thing I notice over there in the corner, that uh, frame is not wedged up. There's a inch gap right there, which makes me think that they probably set that thing there for looks and uh, didn't really care. Or maybe that sewer line is leaking right there uh, and it's making it settle. That'd be kind of odd. But this one is carrying the weight, and guess what? That block right there is cracked, so it's not strong anymore. So we'll have to jack up there and replace that block. What you're looking for 
is blocks that are cracked all the way through here and here. This is a good example. This is probably because um, they slid the blocks off of the side of the run the concrete runner a little bit, and, uh, and on the edges of it, they get kind of rough and sloppy. So that little bit of concrete turned up like that broke that block. It probably wasn't them while they were here. It's after they left it broke. But uh, this is uh, the minimum. You want wood, inch and a half thick. And generally you don't want to go more than three or four inches. You can, but you don't want to. You want to put in another block. As a rule, two cap blocks, then you go to a block. Or two two buys are less than a uh, just a little bit less than a cap block, which is a cap block is the eight by four by 16. Regular block or stretcher is eight by eight by 16. These go on top. If you notice, they ran their blocks this way. That's what you should do. And then your block on top this way. And that's what you should do when you're stacking them is go alternate and, and you want to use your noggin about the last part you want going this way. And we're going to do the same way with jacking. We're going to um, run our boards this way across the frame so that uh, if you put it this way, it could just lean over. This way, if it leans this way or this way, generally you won't lean. Your, your front to back, you won't lean that way. You can if you jack that way, but not likely. Um, so... We got to get all that stuff that we gathered up, one buys, two buys, jacking blocks, jacks, lights, hammers. Um, you might bring a stick with you to knock down the spider webs and such as that. Um, and you start crawling around. We're going to figure out what the, uh, in, we'll probably go into the middle setup, the water level, and I'll probably try to show you that. And we'll try to figure out where our low and high spots are by going around checking this one's we're set to the frame at a certain point and then we'll check everything and say oh this is higher this is lower we'll get an idea in our head my head don't write it out but you could um, what you can do to get it right so if most of the house is lower than one spot check and see if you can just come down that one spot if you decide to go up with all the low area, make sure that all your utilities are, are free and that your straps are loose or and these are anchors and straps go to the frame. Generally, you, unless you're shorter and into concrete, uh, it won't stop you. But you gotta, when you're loosening straps, this might be, uh, you, you have to loosen this nut up right here hammer this over and then there's a square side if you notice this is a square hole right here there's a square side on this bolt and it has to come out and then you tighten it or loosen it whichever way you want to go and uh, and then when you're ready to go back tight you tighten it as much as you can to get and then get it close to that square where that the square on the bolt will be fitting into that square hole and you slide it over, then you put your nut on, tighten it down, and it'll pull it into that square hole of this bolt. This bolt has a slit right in the middle of it that the strap pulls through, and you roll it over after you've hooked it onto that frame, and you tighten it up, and then line it up with that square hole and slide it in, and then put your nut on. You do the opposite to, to take it off. So when you're doing anchors, that's something you can think about. There's a little, there's some other tricks I can show you, but uh, we'll do that another time when I'm doing anchors. Um, so here we go. We're gonna crawl under here, get all dirty and nasty, and uh, get this thing closer to level. It's Phil Bridges. If you like what you saw, you think it might be helpful to somebody else, push that like button and let other people know what you and I now know. And we'll work together toward making a brighter future. And by the way, we're not Americans, we're Americans. See you next time.